So a friend of mine asked if I could go through my process of making images like these. This is, um, so it's a foreground image with then the background Milky Way or stars behind it, and it's a composite image. And so, so first off, you want to get a program called Deep Sky Stacker, and this is a free program for stacking images of stars. And so in this program, you want to open up the files and you want to open up, this is your background image. So we're going to choose these images here and these are our background images and you want to hit check all. And so if you click on one of these images here, we can kind of see what this is. It takes three minutes to load. Here we go. Oh, this one is the one with the comet, which is kind of neat. Not the comet, a meteor going through the atmosphere. And you can't really see much in this image, and that's fine. Um, these are taken, I believe, yeah, 13 second exposures, ISO 1600. And so the shots kind of look like this. Uh, the Milky Way is about here. Uh, this is Jupiter, this is Saturn, it's right in the middle. And so we need to stack multiple of these to reduce noise and to increase signal to noise ratio, which. Uh, it's basically just make it uh, look better is really what it comes down to. And so we have to stack all these. And so to do that, we hit uh, register checked pictures. Uh, and the only thing, most of the defaults for Deep Sky Stacker are just fine. And uh, what I usually do is if you know all the images are good, you can make this high, even as high as 100%. Um, if you don't know if all the images are good, generally just keep it at, I generally keep it around 80% or something like that. And then you want to make sure, go to the advanced tab, and you want to make sure that the number of stars you compute, is, there's, there needs to be enough, but not too many, otherwise it might get lost. And so I generally keep it, uh, try to keep it like above 100 stars, so we can see here. That's exactly 100, so you can just lower it down, let's say 12%. And so what this does is it calculates each star and uses those stars to um, align all the images together and then stack it. So if you have too many stars, it can get lost, but if you have too few, then it won't be able to align them properly either way. And so, yeah, I generally try to keep it around 100, few hundred stars. Anything more gets too much, anything less, it might not work properly. And then for stacking parameters, you should just use intersection mode and uh, median median kappa sigma clipping. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail about all this, I can maybe make another video. But basically most of the defaults for this program work just fine. And then you hit OK and it'll start. It'll pop up this, I'll tell you what, what you want to do, so it's 32 frames, which total exposure, pretty much 7 minutes, and then you hit OK, and it'll start registering, and then stacking. When the program is done making the image, it'll start doing this, it's loading the image in, and it'll make a autosave image, and here on the top, as you can see, uh, this one used 28 frames, and about 6 minutes of exposure. And the, here's the where the file came up, comes out of. Uh, it auto saves a file, and so what you want to do for Photoshop, if you have a fancy program like I do, Pixinsight, you can leave it like this. But for programs like Photoshop, uh, this comes in a 32-bit image, and that's really not completely necessary with Photoshop, and it could cause other issues. Um, so you want to save the picture. So you go save picture of the file. And then you want to save it as a 16-bit a channel TIFF file, and you can save that. Um, we'll save it here in my uh, exports for Deep Sky Stacker. You can just name it, say Milky Milky Way Background, and we can just save that. And then you want to go open it up in Photoshop. Alright, so going into Photoshop, we see here, it, it doesn't really look like much, but I promise you it's there. And so what we want to do is we want to make a new duplicate layer, 
And by doing that is you get your background layer, you drag it, you go over to the new layer icon, which looks like a paper, and when you let go, it makes a new new uh new layer, new duplicate layer. And so what we first what we want to do is we want to we want to go to image adjustments levels and we want to hold shift and then click somewhere on the background. And so what that gives us is that gives us a sample point. And we can see over here our number one sample point one. It shows us that it shows us the values of each uh, individual color in the RGB. And so what we want to do is we want to stretch this image. And so what we do is we bring our black point up all the way until we can see our numbers here change. This is what they were before. This is what they are after the edit. And so we want to bring them up pretty far until. But we don't want them to be black, and so that means our histogram, we want our histogram not to be on the wall, but pretty close to it. And then what we want to do is we want to bring the middle slider all the way up, and you can start to see that come in. And so this looks about good, and it doesn't look good on the preview because it's trying to compress it. Once we hit OK, it smooths out, and it looks fairly good. And so now you can kind of see it, but it's very, very little contrast. And so what you want to do, image, adjustments, and curves. And if we hold control, we can, and then click on areas of the images, what that does is it gives us points to where, whatever that sample is, wherever that area is, that's where it is on our histogram. And so what we want to do is we want to bring these blacks down. And so now the background's a little darker. And then make another point and bring our lights back up. And so what that does is it gives us a bit of contrast. We can hit OK. And what I like to do is just kind of go back and forth between the levels, move the black point, move the center back up, make it look not very contrasty, then go back into your curves and bring back and then bring that contrast a little back. And now we can see we can really see the contrast in there and we can see we have some artifacts and that's just unfortunate that's sometimes that happens um, and that's mostly form from if you look at the bottom this is light pollution and this is probably just some sort of light or sky glow um, and so generally what to do is you just kind of crop it out and you also want to crop a little bit too because if you noticed the edges when when you stack things the edges kind of get messed up as it has to line all the images together and so you usually want to crop those edges out and if we crop this um, we can see this looks a lot better with it's kind of as little sky glow as possible and then we can do you can do other things like I like to boost the vibrance and saturation a little bit um, see how, what it affects there I like to boost them a little bit and then you can do a lot of other things but uh, that's generally the really basics of how to edit uh, Milky Way images in Photoshop when I made this photo I actually edited and the background all that stuff I did that all in PixInsight which like I said that program is very very good very powerful but it costs a lot of money, so it's only really worth it if you're really into it. But if you're really into it, you can kind of see um, this is what I put out of it, and then this is what the Photoshop version I did. I did some color grading, stuff like that. And so now we want to combine it with this image. So this is what the original image looks like. You can see the two planets there. So the Milky Way is actually in that part of the image, and we can see uh, we can see real quick if we could even see the Milky Way a little bit uh no it's uh actually I think maybe it's there I, I it's kind of hard to tell but this is the image we're working with as our foreground and this is the image we're going to work with as our background and so we want to hit control A and control C and that copies this layer we want to go into here make a new layer by clicking the button that looks kind of like a piece of paper Hit that, it makes a new layer, 
and then we just control V and that paste this over and so we want to position it about to where the bottom of this goes with the lowest part of our foreground and so I'm going to put it right about here and this goes over and so what we want to do is we want to drag this layer behind the background and that way when you, if you unhide if you hide this the, the original layer of the foreground uh, see this is hiding behind it and so what we have to do is we have to mask off the sky so that way we, re we reveal the Milky Way photo behind the foreground photo and to create a layer mask we want to hit this button it kind of looks like I don't know it kind of looks like it reminds me of a flag uh, with uh, the white with the cutout circle and hitting that will create a layer mask and what a layer mask does is it basically hides or shows parts of the image and this is a great way to do non-destructive editing because it, you don't delete the pixels of the image you just hide them and so the general and so for layer masks uh, you'll see that this is all white right now and white means it shows through and black means it doesn't and so if you get if you select the layer mask you want to make sure it's selected on the side here you hit the brush tool it's on the side here or you can hit the B button and so we'll show you example I'm gonna go on black uh, on these here and if I paint it black you can see that it reveals the background and so that's obviously not what I want so I'm gonna do that but generally what I do for these is I start by using the magic wand tool and select the background and so that selects every this selects all this um, we want a higher tolerance so a lower tolerance is it so what you do is when you select something it takes a sample uh, I usually use about 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 and that takes the sample of the pixels looks at the brightness and finds everything else that's about the same with it and selects it and you can see all these little dots in here are actually the stars of the background that it's not selecting and so I'm gonna boost this tolerance up uh, usually just play around with it see what works let's do 10 you can see now it's taking that we select other areas so what happens but generally then you select what I do is I select it and then I get the brush tool and I can paint this background out and uh, another thing we can do is now we can reposition this probably somewhere out there uh, then crop out as you can see this the Milky Way photo had the crop quite significantly and so just need to Make sure our whole background and foreground are all the right size. We can crop that out. And here we go. So then we can just keep on going back and forth between the wand and the brush. Oh, this needs a little higher of a tolerance. Oh, that's a little too high. But basically, it's just messing around with that those two settings and getting the rough edges all aligned now for time's sake I'm just gonna use my old image that I saved with all the layers and so you can see if you remove the if you remove the background this is what I have masked out and you can see kind of all the artifacts I got a little lazy and I just combined it with the sky to be perfectly honest and you can see I masked out all these and so when you're going with the layer mask, you also want to, when you find rough edges and stuff like that, you want to get the brush and you want to set it to a lower hardness. So it kind of has a feather, which means it, like, uh, it doesn't, it's not a hard edge. It kind of softens out. And what you can do is you can go around, like, the edges of, like, trees and stuff and just slowly mask it off. And uh, it doesn't really show right there. But if you if you do that, then it, it's very it makes a more soft edge, which blends a lot better than a hard edge. And that's kind of what you want to do. It's what you want to do. And then once you're done with that, you can hit properties. Uh, yeah, properties. 
and then you want to hit a f you want to make a feather on the layer mask. I usually do about uh, for this one I believe I did about six pixels, and that gives it a nice soft edge to everything, and it combines it with the background background a lot better. And so now that we have that, we can put down the layer, put the background back in, and we can see how much it blend it blends in. And so I wanted to blend a little bit better. So what I did is I took two more layers and I kind of, what you can do is I, I adjusted the layers in the spots I want it to and then I made a layer mask and then used the gradient tool which you can found, find here on the side and made a gradient on the layer mask so that way it slowly merges into that other image and we can kind of see the difference in this right corner. I uh, brightened it up a little bit because the Generally, the bottom of the sky is going to be a little brighter than the top, and I did that for the other side as well, which is not as obvious. And so I could do another one just to kind of show the process of that. So we can duplicate the layer, duplicate the layer, put it on top, and let's make an adjustment. Let's just make it brighter. So use higher brightness, and then I also kind of lower the contrast because generally towards the bottom towards a lot of places with more light pollution, you have less contrast. And so you hit the OK, make the layer mask, go to the gradient tool, and make the gradient. And so see how this is all white and then black in the bottom? We want the opposite. So then drag the other way. And so then it makes the bottom look a little brighter. And we can see if we turn that on and off, bottom looks brighter and so that's generally the process I use uh, the more detail you look into it the better the image will end up looking like everything the, these usually take me quite a few hours and that's why I went back to this because this is a lot of tinkering making sure all the edges look good making sure it blends well um, you can see kinda here at least I can see I got a little lazy and it's a it looks a little bit more rough but generally uh, images like these aren't too hard to do it just takes quite a lot of work and that's about it for this video uh, if you want different types of videos different editing uh, I can make those and so thanks for watching